The advancement of solid state technology in the welding industry has made possible many improvements in welding power sources. For example, not so long ago, the largest SCR manufactured could conduct only a few amps. Now, 500 amp SCRs are common, and larger SCRs can conduct up to 1600 amps. Today, printed circuit boards act as internal computers to control and direct welding power. In the next few minutes, we'll look at some of the advantages offered by solid state power sources, the components that make them operate, and see how these individual devices function. Before the selenium rectifier was developed in 1949, the motor generator was the only practical source of direct current welding power. The selenium rectifier was the first solid state device to be used in a welding power source. A further development in 1957 was the silicon rectifier. Silicon rectifiers offer advantages including economy, reliability, and efficiency. Today, the silicon rectifier, for all practical purposes, has replaced the selenium rectifier. Solid state power sources being manufactured today use silicon controlled rectifiers, diodes, transistors, and integrated circuits to control welding output, upslope, downslope, and other performance functions. Before we examine the operation of these solid state devices, let's look at some of the advantages they offer. While the cost of copper and iron is continuing to rise, the price of most solid state devices is remaining relatively constant, and in some cases actually declining. So it makes sense from an economic viewpoint that the more solid state we can use, the more prices can be held down. However, the biggest single factor in favor of solid state are performance improvements that can be designed into the power source. Solid state control allows the volt amp curve to be shaped as required. Current feedback systems hold output constant, automatically compensating for incoming power line voltage variations and the length of secondary welding cables. Other features such as pulsing, upslope, downslope, and square wave for AC TIG aluminum are easily accomplished with solid state control. Solid state can also improve response time, and it makes possible smaller as well as cordless remote current controls. Improved efficiency is another solid state advantage. A solid state power source will usually draw less primary power than a conventional machine. Size and weight reductions are also important considerations. 20 pounds of solid state can replace 175 pounds of magnetics and do it in less space. Now that we've seen some of the advantages offered by solid state power sources, let's look at the components that make this possible. The diode, or rectifier, can be looked at as an electrical one-way valve. Its job is to convert the incoming alternating current into direct current. Alternating current has both positive and negative half cycles. Current flows in one direction during one half cycle, stops the instant it passes through the zero line, then reverses direction during the next one half cycle. Thus, the term alternating current. Direct current flows in only one direction and can be either positive or negative. There is no change of current flow direction as there is with alternating current. To convert alternating current into direct current, the diode is constructed so it has a very low resistance to electron flow in one direction and a high resistance to electron flow in the opposite direction. At this point, we need to explain that there are two theories concerning the direction current flows in a circuit. The conventional theory is attributed to Benjamin Franklin, who made a calculated guess that current flowed from positive to negative. In recent years, however, it's been discovered that electrons actually move from negative to positive. This is known as the electron theory of current flow. It's not really important which theory you subscribe to, as long as it remains constant. For the remainder of this program, we'll use the electron theory of current flow. That is, the current and electrons are moving from negative to positive. Using four diodes, we can construct a full wave rectifier, one that will rectify both halves of the AC waveform. This type of circuit is used in some power sources to provide the direct current for operation of control circuitry. An examination of current flow in the circuit 
shows that when point A on the transformer is in the negative portion of the AC waveform, the current flows through diode 1, the load, diode 3, and back to the transformer at point B. During the portion of the AC waveform that point B is negative, current flows through diode 4, the load, diode 2, and back to the transformer at point A. Since current at the load is flowing the same direction during both half cycles, we have direct current. This four diode full wave rectifying circuit can be used to provide direct current for welding. In our example, the current control system has been eliminated. Again, examining current flow in the circuit, we see that when point A on the transformer is in the negative portion of the AC waveform, current flows through diode one. The load, in this case the welding arc, diode four, and back to the transformer at point B. When B is in the negative portion of the AC waveform, current flows through diode three, the welding arc, diode two, and back to the transformer at point A. A stabilizer is placed in the secondary circuit to perform two functions. First, it affects the time rate of current change. The extremely quick response of solid state components usually requires a throttling or slowing down to provide a better performing welding arc. Secondly, in a single phase power source, the DC ripple produced in the rectifying circuit will be fairly high. The stabilizer stores in its magnetic field the current peaks and then dumps them back into the circuit when current attempts to drop. This smooths the DC ripple produced in the rectifying circuit. Since a three-phase power source will have a much lower ripple factor, smaller stabilizers are usually used. The SCR, which is an abbreviation for a silicon controlled rectifier, is a semiconductor device that normally blocks current attempting to pass in either direction. But when current is attempting to flow in the forward direction, a quick pulse of current into the gate will turn the SCR on. And it stays on even after the gate current is stopped, as long as current is being supplied. If current is turned off or drops to zero, then another gate pulse is required to restore conduction. Through a system known as phase control, we can regulate the amount of current allowed to pass through the SCR. This is done by triggering the gate at different points in the half cycle. By advancing or retarding the gate firing point, we regulate output. For higher welding amperages, the SCR is fired early in the half cycle. To lower welding amperage, the SCR is fired later in the half cycle. The SCR allows a very small gate current to regulate and control the much larger welding current. Because of its ability to start and stop welding current completely, the SCR also serves as a solid state contactor. Since switching is done electronically rather than mechanically, the problem of arcing and contact point burning is eliminated. Most wire feeders use phase control to regulate wire feed speed. The front panel rheostat determines where in the half cycle the SCR is fired and conduction begins. In the same way, the front panel rheostat on a solid state power source signals the control board when to fire the SCRs. For high power, the SCRs are fired early in the half cycle. To lower power, firing is delayed. To hold welding current at a constant value, regardless of power line voltage variations and the length of secondary welding cables, a closed loop feedback system is incorporated into most solid state power sources. A current transformer is placed in the secondary circuit around the output lead. As welding current flows through the cable, a voltage is induced in the current transformer. The value of that voltage is in direct relationship to the amount of current flowing in the cable. A second voltage, this one of known value and called the reference voltage, is produced in the control board. The two voltages, the reference voltage and the feedback voltage from the current transformer, 
are sent to a voltage comparer on the printed circuit board. Usually, the voltage from the current transformer is negative and the reference voltage positive. The voltage comparer is designed to produce an output voltage representing the difference between the two input voltages. When the power source output is correct, the reference voltage and the feedback voltage are the same value, except opposite polarities, so their difference is zero. If for some reason output begins to increase, the voltage from the current feedback transformer will be greater than the reference voltage. The control board will then delay firing the SCRs until later in the half cycle to bring output down to the correct value. If output begins to decrease, the current transformer voltage will drop to a lower value than the reference voltage, and the control board will fire the SCRs earlier to increase output. The Hall device is used in some feedback systems. Like the current transformer, the Hall device produces a voltage that is proportional to current in the welding circuit. It does this by measuring the strength of the magnetic field. This magnetic field strength is directly proportional to welding current. The voltage from the Hall device is then sent to the voltage comparer, which makes adjustments in the SCR firing point to maintain correct output. To adjust power source output, the reference voltage is changed to another value. If we want to increase current, the reference voltage is increased. The voltage comparer will see the change and adjust output to the point that the feedback voltage equals the reference voltage. To decrease welding current, the reference voltage is decreased. The control board will delay the SCR firing point until the feedback voltage has decreased to equal the reference voltage. Now that we've seen how the reference voltage regulates welding current, it's relatively easy to understand other functions, such as upslope, downslope, and pulsing. Upslope works by increasing the reference voltage from one value to another at a slow rate with an adjustable timing circuit. As the reference voltage increases, so does output. Downslope is the opposite of upslope. The reference voltage is reduced over an adjustable time by electronic circuits. Pulsing is accomplished by alternately changing the reference voltage between two values, one high, the other low. Timing circuits control and adjust the repetition rate. In conclusion, if you remember that the firing point of the SCR controls output and the voltage comparer continuously monitors output in relation to the reference voltage, you're well on your way to a basic understanding of solid state power sources.